In this video, we we'll present the MitroClip implant technique for transcatheter mitral valve repair from the Valley Health System in Virginia. We present the case of an 84-year-old frail lady with severe symptomatic organic mitral regurgitation who presents with class 3 symptoms. She also has multiple comorbidities including frailty, prior stroke, diabetes, and advanced kidney and lung disease with pulmonary hypertension. She has a predicted risk of mortality of approximately 15% by STS and has technical considerations including moderate annular dilatation and mitral annular calcification. Due to these reasons, we thought that this patient would have a very good option in a mitral clip transcatheter mitral valve repair as an alternative to surgery. The mitral clip system components are important to understand by the proceduralist. The mitral clip device itself consists of the clip arms as well as the gripper. However, the delivery system is somewhat sophisticated and requires thorough awareness of all the available components. The clip delivery system has two separate components. The first is a steerable guide, sleeve, and delivery catheter, which controls the delivery sheath. A second component delivers the clip which includes a delivery catheter handle and system which control the movement of the clip that allow appropriate grasping of the leaflets. The patient is positioned supine in the hybrid operating room and general anesthesia is induced with endotracheal intubation. Invasive arterial line monitor monitoring is achieved via the radial artery and large bore venous axis was inserted into the right internal jugular vein. Swan-Gans catheter is not typically used. Patient is then prepped and draped in the usual fashion with exposure of both groins and preoperative prophylaxis antibiotics are administered per usual protocol. The right femoral vein is obtained for large bore access and systemic heparinization is administered for an ACT of 250 to 300. Transesophageal echocardiography is mandatory for guidance and the use of 2D and 3D live transesophageal echo Using X-Plane and 3D on fast views is essential for successful deployment. Fluoroscopy is also mandatory for guidance and observation of catheter mitral clip deployment. Unlike transcatheter aortic valve replacement or surgical mitral valve repair, the mitral clip, along with other TMVR procedures, require truly a team approach between the echocardiographic guidance and the proceduralist to achieve a successful result. Specifically, the valve team should have a uniform terminology to discuss the navigation of the MitroClip hardware based on navigational echo with 2D and 3D TE with X-Plane and 3D on fast views being the most common. Other common echo views include the bicaval view for transeptal puncture, the intercommissural two-chamber view, four-chamber and five-chamber views, as well as the transgastric short axis views. Similarly, Fluoroscopy is important for positioning of the steerable guide into the left atrium, device delivery of the catheter for straddling, as well as position of the clip into the left atrium. Axial alignment and opening of the clip arms also require fluoroscopic guidance, as well as identifying gripper position, as well as clip release and device withdrawal are all done under fluoroscopic guidance. The MitroClip implant technique is really divided into five distinct steps. The first is baseline imaging with comment on leaflet anatomy, segment and scala prolapse, leaflet tethering, calcification and perforations, with also special attention being paid to transcatheter valve gradient, annular size, and any potential septal concerns that would render transeptal puncture a difficult process. Second, the transeptal puncture is performed with special considerations to location confirmation and safety, followed by steering and positioning of the mitral clip device into the straddle position, clip axial orientation above the mitral valve annulus. This is then followed by leaflet grasping, insertion assessment and deployment with significant pre-deployment imaging assessment for tissue bridge, gradient and regurgitation, followed by clip release and post-release evaluation. In the end, an assessment is made for the need for any potential further clip placements for a second or third clip, as well as system removal for conclusion of the procedure. 
Deployment of the MitroClip requires significant knowledge of the MitroClip steerable and catheter guidance, and this takes quite a bit of practice and a steep learning curve. The guide handle controls the anterior and posterior movement, whereas the sleeve handle controls the medial and lateral as well as the anterior and posterior movement. The clip delivery handle controls clip position, grasping, and deployment, whereas the stabilizer movement controls the medial and lateral movement of the clip and steerable guide. Baseline imaging is performed in this patient and we identify a prolapsed posterior leaflet at the P2 scallop with well-functioning ventricular function and further delineation of 3D TEE confirms the finding of posterior prolapse with a flail cordae in the middle of P2. Further 2D echo Confirmation reveals an anteriorly directed jet that further confirms the P2 isolated scallop prolapse. At this point, transeptal puncture is the first step of the procedure through the right femoral venous puncture and insertion of a large bore sheath. This can be performed through the Bayless radio frequency transeptal needle or the Brackenborough needle and the Mullen sheath approach. However, approach preferred by the operator, the transeptal puncture is usually performed through a pullback technique with low and steady retraction from the superior vena cava into the mid fossa ovalis under TE guidance using a bicaval or the four or five chamber views with X-plane along with radio fluoroscopic confirmation of the transcatheter needle location. Once identification of the mid fossa ovalis is observed with tenting, the puncture is then desired at the superior and posterior aspect of the fossa to allow for optimal insertion of the guide catheter for easy maneuverability into the left atrium and delivery of the mitroclip. The puncture is also needed to be positioned four or five centimeters above the mitral valve annulus in organic disease and around three and a half centimeters in patients with functional disease since the line of coaptation is usually below the annular plane. Many sites often prefer to insert a pigtail catheter into the aortic root as an extra anatomic landmark to further delineate aortic anatomy through the transeptal puncture. Once the puncture is made with a small needle, confirmation of left atrial pressure is important to confirm anatomic location before further dilatation is carried out. Once confirmed, a small 018 wire is inserted into the left atrium, then intraatrial hole is dilated and Mullen's sheath is advanced into the left atrium. Heparin is administered with an ACT goal of 250 and a pre-gerved 260 centimeter stiff O35 wire is then inserted into the left atrium. A left atrial angiogram can be performed at this point to further confirm the size and the anatomy of the left atrium. And next, we remove the large bore sheath and insert the steerable guide catheter into cone-shaped dilator under fluoroscopic guidance with 2D and 3D TE monitoring. The dilator and wire are then removed and the guide catheter is placed at three centimeters into the left atrium across the septum. Steering and positioning of the mitroclip device requiring position of the metal stabilizer over the right leg and preparation of the clip on the back table with removal of any air within the system. And the clip delivery system is then advanced carefully into the left atrium until the system tip ring is marker is centered between the sleeve alignment markers with a fluoroscopic conformation, which is often referred to as straddling, occurs. Once this is achieved, the delivery guide and the delivery system are then maneuvered within the left atrium carefully using TE guidance to clear the left atrial wall, the Coumadin ridge, and position the mitroclip centrally over the valve. This is achieved using minor repetitive adjustments using torque and knob adjustments. The TE observation in 3D short access on fast view with the clip is then unlocked, the grippers are raised, and the clip arms are opened to 180 degrees with fluoroscopic confirmation. TE is then used to confirm perpendicularity at 12 and 6 o'clock positions with respect to A2 and P2. The clip is then advanced through the mitral valve annulus in a location that splits the mitral valve regurgitation jet under TE guidance an intercommissural 2D view with X-plane. Appropriate orientation of the clip with alignment perpendicular to the line of coaptation and freely moving leaflets above the clip arms is essential to effective grasping of the mitral valve leaflets. 
once in good position to maximize likelihood of firm grasp of both leaflets, under 2D TEE LVOT view, the leaflets are then grasped with gripper arms and then clip arms are closed fully. Insertion assessment is assessed thoroughly with TEE, LVOT, as well as the fourth chamber views to confirm adequate tissue bridge between the anterior and posterior leaflets. The amount of residual mitral regurgitation and mitral gradient are then assessed. A useful hemodynamic adjunct can be assessment of the left atrial pressure V wave compared to the preoperative pressure. If clip position is not acceptable, the grippers are raised, clip arms are inverted, and clip is retracted into the left atrium and repositioned for repeat attempt at crossing the mitral valve annulus and regrasping. If clip position is acceptable, the clip is then released through a series of maneuvers involving the delivery catheter system fastener, release pin, the lock line, actuator knob, and gripper lines. Care must be taken to ensure that the sharp end of the delivery catheter system after clip release does not cause leaflet or cardiac injury during the removal process. Following the release of the clip, the team then performs a repeat assessment of the residual result, including achievement of a double orifice mitral valve with effective tissue bridge, residual MR, and gradient. If second or more clips are required, then this is performed in the same manner. The orientation and advancement of a second, third clip into the mitral valve should be aligned parallel to the initial clip and in closed position to avoid entanglement with cordy tendine. The subsequent clips are then reopened in the left ventricle, then subsequent leaflet grasp and mitral valve assessment is performed in the same manner. Once procedure is concluded, the delivery catheter system and steerable guide are withdrawn carefully under fluoroscopic monitoring. Heparin reversal is performed with pronamine and groin pressure is applied for hemostasis. Aspirin is usually prescribed for 6 to 12 months with clopidogrel for 1 to 3 months depending on the treating team's recommendation. In conclusion, the mitroclip transcatheter mitral repair technique is a safe and effective procedure alternative for the reduction of severe organic mitral regurgitation in well-selected non-surgical patients. Some recent evidence from the COAP trial has also shown promise of the mitroclip device, as well as potentially some other transcatheter mitral technology in severe functional mitral regurgitation patients. Some recent rapid improvements in the mitroclip device, including the NTR and XTR devices, as well as advancements in TMVR technology as a whole, promise to further facilitate these procedures for involved surgeons and cardiologists, and bodes well for patients of both organic and potentially functional etiology of mitral regurgitation.